Recently, I talked about the indie game Jusant, and I complimented how they do their mechanics, but I didn't like how they told their story. Hellblade Senate with Sacrifice is basically a reverse Jusant. I love how Ninja Theory tells the story of Hellblade, but I think the mechanics, especially combat, are mediocre and really repetitive. First though, everything I say in this video is my own opinion, and you can voice yours down in the comments section. Hellblade Senua Sacrifice is a game that I love because of the way Ninja Theory tells Senua's story, not because of its mechanics. In Hellblade, Senua suffers from a form of psychosis or paranoid schizophrenia. I'm not sure which, or if it's both, because, you know, I'm not a doctor. Basically, she hears multiple voices in her head that you as a player can hear, but so can she as the character, and she interacts with them also. It's a really interesting way of doing narration and a good way of having a minimalist HUD. Basically, you can't play Hellblade without having your sound on. The basic overview of Hellblade's story is Senua is fighting her way through Norse Helheim, Norse Hell, to save her lover Dillian, who was killed by the Norse, and to reclaim his soul. It is a story that is all about loss and grief and Senua trying to battle and live with her mental illness. Hellblade's story is told through flashbacks and through the different voices that are in Senua's head. There's the voice that I think is supposed to be Senua's mother or maybe her conscience. It's a voice that is a lot clearer than others when it talks and it kind of talks about how Senua is feeling at the moment. She couldn't find them both. And so she left. Headed for the one ray of light that shone down on her. If she had stayed, she wouldn't have survived. But maybe Delian would still be alive. In any other game, this voice is your faceless narrator. The thing that gives you information about the world and where you need to go in it and like what you're what you kind of need to overcome to complete the game. If I were to compare this voice to anything off of like the top of my head that I can think of, it would be the old man in Bastion who talks about what happens to the kid during the game. Ground forms up under his feet as it point the way. He don't stop to wonder why. There are also other voices that help tell the story. Druth and Dillian are ones that kind of help guide Senua, while Senua's father is basically the voice of the antagonist. Then you have the muddled voices, which basically are there to make you doubt yourself, mock you, and be generally antagonistic outside of combat. But then they don't want to die either, so they act as your heads-up display in combat. Where most games have a circle with marks that appear around your character to indicate an attack from behind, in Hellblade, the voices tell you you're being attacked from behind. That's what I mean by Hellblade has a minimalist HUD. The only actual HUD element that you could say is in the game is Senua's mirror, which is on her belt to indicate how many times you can use your focus, which is basically like a bullet time. And speaking of the HUD, I think it's time to touch on the mechanics of Hellblade. Firstly, combat is very repetitive. You have light, heavy, charged, and sprint attacks, along with a dodge and parry system. The basic gameplay loop for combat is very repetitive. You approach or charge at the enemy, you spam attacks until they swing at you, then you hit a parry, and then you spam more attacks. Maybe you dodge an enemy's heavy attack if they have one, or if they can even get it off. And that's mostly what combat consists of, and it's not a great combat system. It's not horrible, it's competent, but it's not great. And one of the other reasons it's not great is it's forgiving as shit. Like, the window you have for parrying and dodging feels gigantic, even on the hardest combat difficulty, which I played on. I may have died once, maybe twice, throughout the whole 6 to 10 hours I recently put into the game again. It's a game that wasn't made about being a challenge, it was made to tell a really good, really interesting story. While I think combat in Hellblade is fairly uninteresting, the story and how Ninja Theory treats Senua's mental illness 
and integrates it into every aspect of the game is what carries it for me and puts it into my I love it category. It's what makes it one of my favorite games or favorite experiences, I should say. That along with different mechanics for each level, like Val Robin's Illusion Gates, Surtur's Fire, and the Beast's Darkness, make the levels interesting to play. There are some areas where you're just walking with a few fights here and there, but altogether, I find the levels and their mechanics interesting, and I love the game's setting and art design. I'm not saying Hellblade is the best game I've ever played, but it's a game that I love going back to every now and again. Especially with Hellblade 2 Senua's Saga coming out soon, I wanted to refresh my memory of where Ninja Theory left off with Senua's story, and I want to see where they're going to take it next. And yes, Hellblade 2 is one of my most anticipated games of the year. But because Hellblade 2 isn't out until like the end of the month, my next video is going to be taking a look at the 2D Metroidvania indie game, Nine Years of Shadows, or Nine Years of Shadow. I think it might be just Shadow. So in two weeks, I hope you'll tune in to hear my thoughts on that game and that you'll do all the algorithm stuff for this video. You know, like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, leave a comment, and also have a royal day.